Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, County Administrator and co-host of this program. And you may be able to tell that to my left, your right is not my fearless leader, the County Board Chairman, Roger Distruti. Instead, he's across from me today. Today is somewhat of a bittersweet uh, program for us because uh, we always have the pleasure of generally interviewing a department head or one of their key staff. but. This will be the conclusion as Roger Distruti's term as County Board Chairman. He has served in that capacity now for four years, 32 years on the County Board. And this could potentially be the last TV8 program we do together. So as I said, it's bittersweet, yet at the same time, we've really got some wonderful accomplishments to talk about. So Roger, welcome to the program. Thank you. <laughs> Please begin by sharing a little bit about your background when you first started on the county board and a little bit about your family. Sure, I, uh, I grew up uh, three miles west of uh, Cedar Grove on a family farm. Uh, the, uh, the first of my generation settled there in the 1840s and uh, cleared the land and uh, now my, I, I, I helped on the family farm growing up and uh, now my nephew is on the farm and he's the seventh generation living on the family farm. So it's, uh, it's nice that we were able to keep it in the family and that was, that was a real good thing. And uh, I grew up, uh, went to church right in town in Cedar Grove and Cedar Grove High School. And uh, growing up, my, uh, my family always had a little interest in government. My, uh, actually, my great grandfather served on the town board as chairman in the 1800s and the 1900s. And uh, at that time, when you were chairman of a township, you automatically were a supervisor of that area on the county board. So he served on the county board in the 1800s and the 1900s. And I had the privilege of serving in that same district in the 1900s and now into the, the 2000s. So kind of neat that we kept that going. So. Uh, tremendous, tremendous history. What a nice snapshot. And Mm -hmm. uh, Lord knows your family has to be proud that you've kept that tradition going. So it's been 32 years now on the county board. What was it initially that uh, inspired you to run? Was it that family history or something? Well, I, I always had an interest in, in uh, local government and I, did, I was serving on the town board. And my, I think I was in my second term. And then a gentleman uh, that had the position before me, Ernie Lammers, uh, was stepping off the board. I think he had been on close to 20 years, I believe. And I knew him well, and he, he said, I'm, I'm not running, would you be interested? And then ended up that there were three people that ran, and uh, I was able to make it. And uh, some of the issues at that time were the county, or some people in the county were considering countywide zoning. And having served on the local zoning, committee with being on the board, it's hard to imagine that we could have countywide zoning for the variety of, of villages and towns and along the lake and uh, the Kettle Moraine, everything is different. Mm -hmm. It would be hard to have countywide zoning and control. And as it turned out, uh, <clears throat> never really, really even came to a vote because it, it got pushed back before that, but that was one of the concerns I had at that time. And I think that's been one of the strong suits of our county board even today. We have uh, some county board supervisors that also serve on town board, so they yes. bring even more local flavor and a better appreciation of their particular community's needs and interests. Right, I believe so. So you started on the board 32 years ago. Obviously, mm -hmm. time's flown, and we'll talk about a number of things, but sure. uh, what were or what are some of the standing committees that you served on during your tenure? Uh, my first uh, committee assignment was the Resource Committee. Now it's called the Prey, Prey Committee with a little variety of other things in with it. But uh, I was on there, enjoyed that. That was when the, uh, our committee took over the airport at that time. It was not uh, really part of the county and we brought it in as a, uh, a committee assignment and then we had uh, we hired Chuck Meyer as a manager, and that really helped us uh, coordinate things and help that airport grow. After that, I also served on the law committee, or, or the two committees at once, and uh, 
Then after that, I was elected to the executive committee. And then uh, later along the way, I served on HR and also finance. Yeah. And I was uh, fortunate enough to get elected uh, chairman <coughs> of the resource, uh, the law committee, and the finance committee, and the executive committee as chairman. So always quite an honor with the people in your committee uh, want you to serve as their chairman. So I was honored to have that opportunity. Well, the executive committee is really, I look at as the key leadership committee because it's established or elected by your peers. So mm -hmm. obviously you're county board chairman now, but you've been on the executive committee as long as I've been in this position, which is close to 18 years now. You perhaps were on it prior to that as well, but the ex executive committee is elected by the, their peers on the county board, the chair, the vice chair, mm -hmm. and um, you know I think that's the leadership of the committee. Of course, the finance committee is, holds the purse strings and has tremendous yes. responsibility. So you've really served on some of the more active committees. You mentioned resources mm -hmm. when you're on it. Now, PRECOM, which is planning, resources, agriculture, extension. So mm -hmm. a lot going on with these right. committees you've been on. So over your course of your uh, tenure on the board thus far, what do you see as some of the biggest challenges that you've been a part of uh, working on, problem solving? Well, um, on the law committee we had uh, several issues going on when I was serving. Uh, we had the overcrowding of the jail that led to the uh, building of the uh, first section, the first phase of the um, jail and then the second, and uh, now it's sort of leveled off on how many people we need to incarcerate with some of the uh, the bracelets and a few other things that we were able to do, but uh, that was quite a challenge, those building projects. And then uh, uh, also we had, uh, when I was serving on the law committee, we had, we were one of the first counties in the state to have enhanced 911. And in order to do that, we had to uh, give a number to each rural uh, home before they had each township was numbered. It was very hard to get an organization and where things were for the fire departments. And then with the enhanced 911, you get the phone and you have the location, even if the person making the call uh, falls down and is not able to talk, they know the location. But to do that, we had to have the entire grid of the county uh, put on numbering systems so it all matched up. That was met with a little resistance, but uh, we talked to the towns and they understood and we had the support of the fire departments because they knew it was very important, the ambulance and everything. So that happened and uh, at that time, that was, it was a little hard for people to change. You, you mean I have to change my my checks, I have to put a different address on there and there are all kinds of things, but I think everybody realized it was for the better that we did that. And uh, when I was on the HR committee, we had always things going on with the different uh, uh, unions that we had to negotiate with. We, we kind of streamlined the process, so we offered the chance to each committee to have some flexibility and management could move things around if if they could do it with less less money, with changing positions and duties, and I think that was very helpful. On the executive committee, we had a chance to, um, we, we came up with the thought of only borrowing four million a year because there were so many needs, but we had to prioritize and just had to live within that budget, and we we had done that for the for the whole time until just this past year, we finally bumped it up with the inflation factor to 5.5. That's allowed us to stay very steady on the growth of, of the bonding and actually able to decrease the total cost because we leveled off those high years now. So that was helpful. And I think the very best thing I was ever involved with was um, on the executive committee when we hired you as the administrative coordinator. And that led into you being administrator. And we felt that the most important thing to have was such a large organization as we are or a business. We need uh, someone, a CEO looking over everything. We're part-time people. 
we, we can't be there all the time. You have the ability of uh, talking to people and understanding the entire, uh, entire situation, the entire county. And another thing I think that's been very helpful is the leadership forum that we have. That allows the entire group to, uh, on one afternoon into the evening, talk about all the things in the county. Everyone has their committee assignments and they get to the point where they say my committee and they know that committee functions very well. Sometimes they don't understand the big picture and there are priorities within the organization and sometimes things need to be spent more this year on one thing, then you gotta cut back on something else. And I think there's a better understanding of the whole group, what is the the entire needs of the entire county, all the departments. So I think those are some of the things that I'm very glad that I've been a part of. So, Well, thank you for the compliment, and I'm impressed with your recollection there. You didn't look down at your notes once to recollect Well, maybe recollect I'm getting some... off track here. But <laughs> no, um, no. We're, we're I'm impressed to... with your yeah. recollection. Um, not only at all the things you mentioned there, but as you know, you led a an organizational change with the executive committee to reduce the size of the board from yes. 35, 34 to 25. Mm -hmm. And for our viewers who may not be aware of it, though, uh, we're very proud of our collective accomplishments, our team, county board department heads, all staff. We're a leaner organization during Roger's uh, tenure on finance and executive and HR. We've now reduced our staffing from about 1,350 employees to closer to 810. Mm -hmm. So we're a leaner organization. A lot of things that you can touch on and you certainly uh, raised a number of them. Give the, our viewers a flavor for how you take action. Now, you mentioned you know, that we've got 25 board members. We mm -hmm. have these standing committees. We have 19 departments, 810 staff, as I mentioned, all these programs and services. How does the board, you know, in a, in a thimble, how does the board take action to create programs or add or reduce staff or, you know, take action on the budget? How does that happen? Sure. E each committee initiates what action they feel is necessary to enhance their department or a particular part of that, their operation. Uh, and then, uh, say, if the uh, highway committee feels that it's necessary to spend some money on, a, on a several roads that are, are in need of repair. They initiate that and send that resolution to the, generally that referral would go to the finance committee because it takes dollars to make that happen. Then the finance committee looks at their proposal, asks some questions, gets a few answers, looks things over, might make some adjustments. Then when the second committee gets a good look at it, then it goes to the full board with two committees looking at it very carefully. And then some of the details have been worked out, so when it gets to the full board, then we have a, a better understanding. A lot of those questions have been answered. So then the, the whole board has a good feeling that some of those questions that they might have asked are asked. There's always a few more that are asked, mm -hmm. but we have several eyes looking at it and a couple different angles and not just the committee that feels the importance of that program going forward. Well, if anybody's writing a paper on local government or how county government operates, this would be a good program to, to watch. So you've, you've given a little history now of mm -hmm. a number of the accomplishments that you and board members have been a part of over your tenure. And you've talked a little bit about the organizational structure and how decisions are made. Let's just focus in now on some key initiatives, key initiatives that you specifically take pride in because you know you helped lead that change. Well, I, I mentioned the uh, rural numbering system and I was chairman of the law committee at that time and uh, being on the Towns Association and you mentioned the, the correlation between the uh, a local board and the county board. I'm at, I, well, I, I was and I still am active with the Towns Association. They meet quarterly and that was an opportunity. I asked Sheriff Spellshaus to attend the meeting, explain what we're doing, and, and then everybody throughout the county that was affected by it, their leaders had a listen of it, what was going on. And it was a much easier sell when those chairmen and those other supervisors knew what was happening 
they talk to their neighbors and their friends and say, yeah, I know it's a little inconvenient, but it's a good thing. And, and another thing I'm, I'm very proud of uh, is the when I was uh, chair of the law committee, we also had a, a need to have a separate location for juveniles. And we, we had the, the situation where we needed to, at that time, we were very crowded and what can we do? And then the option was, one of the options was to have a standalone juvenile detention center. Had to find a location, property, build a standalone. That would have cost uh, $2.7 million at that time. We're talking in the, I'm thinking the late 80s or early 90s. Then uh, the reason we first considered building on the existing jail and law center, but we couldn't build up because that was only constructed for two stories. Well, what can we do? Well, there's not enough room. We got the parking lot, we got this, the, the uh, street, and what can we do? And having a little background in construction, I said, well, let's cantilever the building over the parking lot. We can, uh, we can do that and let's have the architects check if that's possible. And then uh, ended up that we built an uh, extension of the jail right there. The, the first floor were used for extra office space, which was actually needed at that time as well. That ended up to be $400,000, no small amount, but that eliminated the the fact, the, the chance of us having to build the standalone at 2.7, which would have not only cost more, by having it separate from the main location, we would have had to staff that more heavily because you have to have backup and everything, and then the food would have to be delivered there. So I'm very proud that that saved us quite a few dollars just by asking that question and having a little knowledge of what could possibly be done. So I love that example. You know, $2.7 million cost to build a standalone facility, which was seriously being contemplated, mm -hmm. versus a $400,000 addition. It's worked very, very well. Yes. And that $2.3 million in savings, I think, was more than enough to cover your per diems over the years. <laughs> I mean, what a savings. It's, it's a great example. And it's, it's a great example that if you're on the county board, you know, we, we always, we work collectively, the board takes actions collectively, but as an individual, you can not make a real difference. Mm -hmm. You can make a significant difference, whether it's a good idea, a policy change, or saving some significant dollars. So I, that's a great example. So <clears throat> four years ago, when you were elected county board chairman, mm -hmm. what changed? How did your role change as a, as a county board supervisor? Um, well, having served at that time 28 years, I believe it was, then, then, uh, then I thought I knew quite a bit about the county. Having served on a variety of committees, I knew that some of the committees I hadn't served on and didn't get in the details, I, that was the part that was very surprising to me, that even ever, having, having served a lot of years, there were things that I just did not know very well at all. And it was kind of surprising to attend some of these meetings more, uh, more often and get into the details and everything goes over, over your desk and mine and then you get a little better flavor of that. And one of the things, well, we, we hadn't really had for very many years was the Economic Development Corporation. I knew a little bit about it and I was uh, supporting it as much as I could, but having served on that committee, I got to know all of the businesses and how we, we work together. We were blessed to have so many family-run businesses in our county that are, have their roots there and they're not ever thinking about moving overseas and how just by having uh, that, that group work together we have created a lot of jobs and now we're fortunate actually to be in the position of the employers needing employees. A few years ago it was not and that, that has changed just in the four years that I've been uh, able to serve as, uh, as chairman. So. Yeah. That's, a, that's a good story. You know, after 28 years, 
you know, you think you've been it, done it all, seen it all for the most mm -hmm. part, and, and there's always so much to learn and new yeah. things going on, and that's a great example mm -hmm. with the Economic Development Corporation. Of course, you're the first county board supervisor uh, participating on that mm -hmm. executive committee and the board and the county is, it's a public-private partnership. A lot of mm -hmm. people don't know that, but it's a right. public-private partnership, mm -hmm. and the county and the city help support it along with the private sector, and it's making good things happen. Yeah. Great example. Well, we're starting to get a little closer to the end of the program, and I know one thing that you wanted to talk about and something that's very near and dear to you in both your role as a county board chairperson but also working at the town level is transportation. Please talk a little bit about you know a key challenge ahead of this county mm -hmm. and the state as a whole and, and uh, you know, set the stage. What, what are we up against here? Well, as you mentioned, we've, we've made some great strides in streamlining and uh, becoming leaner. One thing we can't do is we can be lean in the transportation department, but we still can't make those dollars stretch any farther. The, the tremendous increase in cost of transportation it has just escalated way beyond the normal uh, inflation rate and we've balanced our budgets but sometimes it was by having to blacktop less miles of road. We have 450 miles of road and with the average age of those roads, the life of the road, the blacktop is 15 years, maybe a little less, maybe more depending on the traffic, but we should be blacktopping uh, 30 miles of road a year to keep up with that pace. We're spending the same amount of dollars, but instead of that 30 miles a year, it's been 10, 12, 15 the last couple of years. That works for a couple of years, but we're getting behind. And we have to think about either borrowing more money or figuring some way to keep up with those roads because just like the uh, commercial that used to be on about the uh, filters. You can pay me now or you can pay me more later. You got to maintain your roads to keep up the pace, to keep them up to a par that they don't deteriorate and have to cost more to rebuild. That is the biggest challenge I feel we have going forward. And if memory serves, I think the cost of just one mile of overlay is about, what, $120,000? Yes. But if you don't keep up with it and you have to pulverize and pave, then you're looking at about $250,000. Yes. And if you don't keep up with that and really kick the can down the road for that same one mile to completely rebuild it, you're looking at $1.2 million. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is amazing. Yeah. And if we're going to be fiscally responsible, as you said, we've got to do something about it. We can't continue to just ignore it or hope it gets better. That's not magically going to happen here. That's, that's right. We've got a big challenge ahead of us. And you uh, chair right now a group called the Heads of Local Government. Yes. You get together quarterly with this group uh, across the county. I've been hearing what you're hearing. It seems like taking care of our roads is becoming a priority or a key concern of all levels of government. Would you agree? Yes, we, uh, we meet uh, quarterly at least unless there's a very pressing topic, but uh, we have common problems. There should be common solutions. We talked to everyone around the table. We asked them, what is your biggest challenge going forward? Every one of them around the table said transportation, keeping up with their road projects and that was their biggest challenge and I, I really think that we're all in this together. We all see this so everyone in the community, Sheboygan County community has a challenge keeping up with their road projects and we heard that loud and clear from every one of the uh, village presidents, the city mayors and the town chairman. That was their biggest need. Now the question is do we have the political will to do something about it and I anticipate the board's going to be focusing on this very closely under your mm -hmm. leadership as well as the new county board chairperson here soon. Yes. We only have a couple of minutes left and as I reflect and think about your track record and the county's track record the last three decades and certainly your track record the last four, I don't know if there's a more successful county board chairperson in the state 
if you just look at the last 10 years, the county board has raised property taxes on average less than 1% a year. Uh, has been very frugal, lots of consolidation, streamlining, as you said. Mm -hmm. We've got some big challenges ahead, but I think we've got good people and a good team in place to, to, to take them on. Uh, what, what's been most rewarding for you, Roger, uh, serving as county board chair? Well, I believe some of those same things you mentioned. We've got a great fiscally sound track record here, and what was near and dear to my heart is something in my town of Holland area that I represent as well as the village of Cedar Grove. We were able to make happen the Amsterdam Dunes project, yeah. and uh, I knew that area well. My my uh, my uh, a great uncle actually farmed that. 300 some acres and knew it well. As a youngster, one of my buddies lived right along the lake and uh, was there different times. And uh, we had an opportunity to buy that uh, when it was near a foreclosure state. So we purchased that $7.4 million of value property for 4.2. And uh, usually I'm not in favor of buying private property to make it public because you take it off the tax rolls. That area was not heavily taxed at all. That value was only taxed uh, just over $2,000 because right. that was in the woodland tax credit, which it never should have been, but it was. Mm -hmm. But we were able to get that uh, at a very reduced price and it also not only preserve the area, what we have going forward is the wetland mitigation bank that we're proposing to start, which allows some of that acreage to be sold or the credits to be sold to a company in our area that needs to expand. If they need to expand their, their footprint of their building and it's right next to the wetlands, they couldn't do it unless they have that credit. So uh, the business community and the environmentalists were both in favor of that. A large purchase like that at 4.2 million got unanimous support on the board, and that was that was something that I'm always be proud of that yeah. I was a part of that. Yeah, as you should be. I think it was the icing on the cake of four very effective years as county board chairperson. I have learned from you. I have appreciated your guidance, your leadership, and I'm going to miss working with you as county board chair, but I'm thankful that you're going to continue as a county board supervisor and continue to help make good things happen. So Roger, thank you for sharing a little snapshot today of, of your time as chair and your 32 years as a whole on the county board. Well, thank you for the kind words, Adam. Yeah. Appreciate working with you. And thank you for joining us. If you want to learn more about county government or learn more about Roger Destruti and some of the accomplishments or initiatives that we've been involved in, or you want to talk about roads and transportation and the challenges we have and your ideas to help solve them, don't hesitate to contact County Board Chairman Destruti or myself or your County Board Supervisor. April 5th, our elections. We're anticipating to have a very similar group back on the county board. We don't have, I don't think there's any competition right now of any of the county board supervisors. And I think in part, it's largely due to their excellent track record. So thank you for joining us. Next month, Aaron Brault will be here for, from our planning and conservation department. And until then, again, thanks for joining us.